even if I believe in him spiritually, yes. he's going to make a way. Yes. Matter of fact, he already did. Yes. And he did it on Calvary. Hallelujah. Yes. And that's why it's worth the race. Yes. It's worth everything. Because when we see Jesus, yes. amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. So our posture is with a thank you. Thank you, Lord, for everything Thank you've done. You, Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.
fraud and not robbery to come out and celebrate my pastor. I know what to be my pastor and my first lady. Because I tell y'all what, I could love two more people than Woo! This is one of these days that I get this privilege to stand up here and say thank you. And you're welcome to come and serve and share in this wonderful glorious occasion with us. It's been 15 years, y'all. They stay for 15 years. And y'all know some of us. Y'all know some of us. I'm just keeping it real. Y'all know some of us make it real hard sometimes. Y'all know I'm telling you. But we're going to get past all that. We just want to say thank y'all for coming out. Thank y'all for coming to worship with our first lady and our pastor and our children because we grew up with them. They grew up with us. So they out. They can't go nowhere. They can't do nothing without us knowing about it. They out. So on behalf of Pastor Day, on behalf of First Lady Day, on behalf of our kids, we just say thank you for coming out. Lord, we greet you and we just say, y'all, celebrate our family. Just celebrate. But most of all, we came to celebrate who? We came to give God all the glory because you know what? He's the one that sent him here. And didn't he do a great job by sending him here? All right, that's what I'm talking about. So on behalf of First Day Day and Pastor Day, I say you're welcome, welcome, welcome. God is worthy to be praised. Good people will be coming from Romans chapter 10, beginning at verse 13. Whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without the preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? And it is written, How beautiful are the people of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of uh, good things. Right. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah said, Lord, you have believed our report. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. God bless you. Amen. 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 Come on, friendship, put your hands together. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Come on, all over the building. Give God a hand clap of praise. Come on, come on, y'all help me, y'all help me. Give God a hand clap of praise. Why? Because he's worthy to be what? How many of y'all know God has been good to us? Let me try it again. I thought I was in friendship. How many of y'all know God has been good to us? Three of y'all didn't say that right longer than we tried it. One last time. God has been good to us. But how do you know we could have been dead, buried, sleeping in our grave? But how many of y'all think God, God gave us another chance? Anybody thank God for another chance? Anybody thank God for another opportunity to lift up the name of Jesus? Grace and peace again be multiplied each of you from God our Father, His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, and from the Holy Spirit, who's both our comforter and our God. Let me say good morning to the church. What a blessing it is to be alive. What an even greater blessing it is to be saved. For the reality of our conviction is we're not smiling on God. But how many of y'all know God is richly smiling on us? Amen. I want to hasten to say thank you to each of you for, again, all your calls, emails, text messages, whatever capacities of communication we've experienced this week. Let me say thank you for you thinking it not proper to communicate with your pastor. Let me know that you're thinking about me and my family. 
and that you'll continue to pray for me and with me. So again, I pray that you'll continue to do just that, amen, because we're all in this thing together, amen. amen. I know that if I preach and you pray, God will bless, is that right? Amen. amen. So again, let me say thank you. I do want to just do these echoes real quickly and say remember tomorrow night at 7 o'clock p.m. we will have church school via our Zoom, so please sign on at 7 o'clock p.m. As I always state, you can't shout about a God on Sunday. You have to study it on Monday. Amen. So join us tomorrow night at 7 o'clock p.m. And then Wednesday, please join us as we continue to uh, study our book, Facing Giants, Our Journey Through Success in the Life of David and Saul. So I want you to join us at 7 o'clock p.m. on Wednesday that, again, we may hear again what thus says the Lord. Amen. I want to say thank you to each of you for even this morning all of your calls and text messages uh, to wish us a happy 15th anniversary. Let me say to you, thank you so very much that when you got up, not only was Jesus on your mind, but I was on your mind. Amen. So let me say thank you so much to you for, for that. I'm going to save all my remarks for after uh, the preacher has shared with us the gospel of Jesus Christ. But I do want to take a moment to say thank you to Pastor and First Lady Stallion. We all help me celebrate them today. We all tell the Lord, where's First Lady Stallion at? Amen. We all tell the Lord, thank come on now, y'all don't give them a hand. Y'all give them a real hand. Amen. Thank y'all so much for hanging out with us on the first Sunday. Amen. And so it means well to us, and I appreciate the very fact that, amen, God has a gift, amen, in this man we call David Stallion. And so we are excited to hear what God is going to say based upon what he has already uh, said, amen. So again, we're going to journey through uh, our worship experience today. Please, ma'am, please, sir, don't sit tight. Y'all know I hate a quiet church, amen. And I can shout at my television when Georgia was behind on last night. Y'all ain't talking to me. Then I can shout my low this morning because God is still good to us. Amen. Amen. So again, I say thank you this evening, this morning. I do want us to just consider these two. Number one, please be in chat and prayer for Miss Jada Smith, who on yesterday had emergency surgery. And so I want you to be in prayer for her. So she's in, uh, in the high school hospital uh, this morning resting. And I, I spoke with Jesse this morning. And uh, we had uh, let her know that we were praying with her and for her. And so y'all continue to lift her in prayer as well. I do want to just say, please put on your radar on next Sunday. You know, we are scheduled to go to the St. James Church in Opelika, Alabama, to help Pastor L.W. Booker celebrate in his pastoral anniversary next Sunday after our morning worship. But I want you to just be on standby, be on pause. And while you're on pause and on standby, I want you to be in prayer. Amen. Amen. Because I found out, uh, got word uh, on Friday that L.W. Booker is in the hospital in ICU. Amen. And so we want to be in prayer, amen, because we know a prayer still works. I tell us all the time, prayer may not change things, but prayer pleases God. And then when God is pleased, how many of y'all know God will change some things? Amen. So we're being in prayer for Jada. We're in prayer, uh, amen, for Pastor L.W. Booker. But then most of all, we're in prayer uh, for the day family, amen. I just pray that you'll pray with us. And again, pray for us because again, this day, even as we recognize the, ju the journey of 15 years, as I said, August the 1st, 2007, it's still not about LaCoya Day. It's all about Jesus Christ. And so as we're here today, and we thank God for the moment of celebration. It is our hope and our trust and our prayer that we end up and always uh, give God the glory. Amen. Amen. Again, so we thank God for each of you. We love each of you. We, we just pray heaven will continue uh, to smile on each of you and again give you peace. How many of y'all are happy and you know it? Amen. Amen. I tell you, I'll tell you, I face. I'll be sure to show it. Listen real quickly. Look at somebody. We're not going to move around the sanctuary, but look at somebody and wave at them across the sanctuary. Come on, wave at them. Tell them hello. Amen. Shout at them. Thank God uh, for them being present today because you never know what somebody is dealing with and or going through. Is that right? And how many of y'all know just a smile will keep them from doing hey, the ultimate danger to their life? Amen. And so again, we thank God for each and we thank God for every uh, one of you. Let's transition real quickly to our moment of gift giving. It's giving time in the sanctuary, but we know God loves a what? Come on, tell y'all didn't see it on my right. Let me try it again. God loves a what? 
God loves a cheerful giver. And we know that the more you give, the more God will indeed give unto you. Listen, you can't be God's giving no matter how you try. But today, we at least are going to try. Is that all right? Amen, amen. amen. So there are a couple of ways to give here at the Friendship Church. For those of you who are in person and you came through the doors, you should have received an envelope. If not, it should be one on the back side of your pew. If you have not dropped your envelope in the basket when you came into the sanctuary, but go ahead and fill that out and bless the Lord the way God has blessed you. And then on your way out, I want you to drop your envelope in the basket. Amen. Is that all right? Amen. Amen. And then for those of you who are sharing with us virtually, I pray that you would, or even in person, if you have the Givelify app, you can download, if you don't, rather, you can download the Givelify app. You can search the words Friendship Hamilton. And then again, you can be a blessing electronically uh, to the awesome and almighty God. And again, God has so richly uh, been a blessing unto you. And then lastly, if you care to send it the old-fashioned way, you say, well, Pastor, I don't have an envelope. Pastor, I don't do electronic giving. I just want to put it in the um, snail mail and send it to you. You can do just that. Send it to P.O. Box 546, Hamilton, Georgia, 31811. Again, that's the P.O. Box. Uh, 546 Hamilton, Georgia 31811 We will receive it, uh, we will collect it We will count it and then we will credit it That God may be pleased With your giving, amen Again, you're not giving to me, you're not giving to the church You're blessing the name Of our God, amen And so it is, if we work together, let us repeat Say after me, Lord This is my tithe I give to you by faith I give not out of formality. I give in obedience to your word. Bless it now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. How many of y'all know prayer still works? I, I need some real folk today because there's somebody laying in a hospital bed right now that needs somebody to intercede on their behalf. Let me try it again. How many of y'all know prayer still works? If we're sitting here this, this morning, it's simply because somebody simply prayed for us. Do I have any help in here? And I'm grateful today because when I could not pray for myself, how many of y'all know I thank God I had somebody that was able to pray for me? Is that all right? And every now and then, when those that end up praying for you, even themselves get weak and get weary and get worn. How many of y'all thank God that there is a Christ that never gets weak, never gets worn, never gets tired? And every day of our life, can I tell you what he's doing? He's praying for us. He's asking the Father, Father, if you would just be of yourself and give them another chance. How many of y'all thank God that God has given you another chance? Anybody thank God he's giving you another chance? Here it is. To iron out another wrinkle and write down another spot. God has given us another chance. And so as we celebrate 15 years of pastor and people, as we think about the essence of after the benediction, uh, dying insufficiently and sumptuously one with another, and as we think about how we're going to spend the rest of our Sunday evening, even in preparation for another week's journey. Don't you forget to pray. Don't you forget to bow in and on your knees. Because somebody needs us to pray for them. And if you don't have anybody to pray for, let me tell you who you are. Just, just pray for me. Is that all right? Because if you pray for me, then I know that when two or three are gathered together in the name of Jesus, I declare he'll be in the midst. Anybody need prayer today? Well, guess what? If you, if you don't need prayer and everything is all right in your life and tick tack and in order here, here's what I want you to do. I want you to just tell the Lord thank you. Anybody got anything to say thank you about? I love my situation and my circumstance. I feel in the midst of troubles, trials, and tribulations. I feel like
but from the top, I feel like going home. Feel like
our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come to let thy will be done on earth as thou would have it to be done in heaven. Master, give us this day our daily bread, and Master, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who sin and trespass against us. Master, lead us not into temptation. But my Heavenly Father, deliver us from all things we call sin, harm, and evil. Our Father, here it is again and another time we've come now to the house of worship just to say thank you. Our Father, we pause here now to say thank you for the opportunity that you allowed us to lay down last night. God, we thank you for the opportunity you gave us to talk and turn all night longer. But God, we thank you that early this morning, God, you woke us up and you started us on another day's journey. And God, for that, we say thank you. Our Father, we thank you because we recognize that, God, we still had the activities of our limbs. We thank you because we recognize we still have blood running warm in our faith. God, we, we thank you because we recognize we had eyes to see, ears to hear, and a leg to walk on. And God, for that, we say thank you. Thank you, God, for giving us the right mind and the right spirit to press our way to the house of worship one more time. God, there's somebody around the altar this morning, God. There's somebody in the midst of the pew this morning, God, that's had a hellacious week. But we thank you for the opportunity to worship and praise your name. And so it is, my Father, I pray now that whatever it is we went through on last week, I thank you right now for a week's grace, God. I thank you for the opportunity to get to the house of prayer one more time. And so, God, now that we're here, help us to not be concerned about what's going on around us. Help us not to be concerned about what's going on next week or next year, but help us right now to lift up the name of your son, Jesus. For God, you declare in your word, and I, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. And so, God, we come this morning to lift you up above everything that's not like you. We lift you above hatred. We lift you above jealousy. We lift you above backbiting. We lift you above lying. We lift you above adultery. We lift you above every sin that is the past all of our life. But God, you're still worthy. God, you're worthy. God, you're worthy to be praised. And so God, we thank you that even now in the midst of the celebratory moment of the 15 year celebration, help us not to see the man. But God, help us to see the man. Help us not to see LaCroix and David. Help us to see Jesus Christ, the very Son of God. God, we pause to say thank you. Thank you for the opportunity, God, to know you. Thank you for the opportunity to be saved, God, because there's somebody somewhere willing to trade places with us. But God, we pause to say thank you. God, we pray especially for Miss Taylor Smith today. God, you made her. You know all about her. Touch her even now. And she lies on her bed of affliction from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet. God, we're praying for Pastor Booker. We're praying for the St. James Church. We, we pray, God, that we know that you're still able. You're too wise for God to make any kind of mistake. And so, God, we pray that you'll just have thine own way. Not just them, God, but they're those who I know that these don't know. They're those that these know that I don't know. But God, I don't have to sit you nowhere because you're on my presence. Just sit there. Have your own way. Have your way there, God, but then have your way here. Have your way in this place, from the pulpit, from the choir law, all the way to the back door. Have your way, God, that some sinner man, woman, boy, or girl may go and say, what must I do to be saved? Have your way. Take our worship from where it is, God, to where you would have it to be. God, we want to see the omnipotence of your glory. God, we want to see you for who you are. And so, God, I pray now that you'll give us a word from on high. Sit us around heaven's table. Feed us till we want no more. God, we declare even now we are weak, but thou art mighty. Hold us with thy powerful hand. We lift up. We lift.
lift up today. Pastor David Stallion. God, we lift them to you. Give him what we need. Give him what we deserve. But give him what we don't deserve. Give us a word from on high. Again, God, I pray you would allow, allow him to be hid not beneath your cross, but hide him in your cross. That these, thy people, will see none of him, but shall see all of thee. God, we thank you today. God, we praise your name today. God, you're so worthy today. We magnify your name. We glorify your name. God, you're worthy to be praised. It is in the strong, matchless, majestic name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, Yeshua Messiah. We pray, and every heart that agreed said, Amen, Amen, Amen. church family and the day family. We're going to get your face. <laughs> Reflections using program covers. See how many of you recognize pictures and bits of information. How many of you remember this? This is when it all began. October 7th, 2007 at 4 p.m. We recognize that young lady in the picture, but who is that slim young man? <laughs> when they came to us in 2007, they brought two little girls whose talents had not yet developed. Amen. And before we knew it, a year had passed and we were celebrating the first anniversary. And look how they dressed for the occasion. <laughs> Pastor Day, you weren't scared, were you? 
<laughs> By the end of 2008, the following had happened. Our thing became a family of love united in the power of Christ. Right. Ministries had been restructured, no more boards, circles, or clubs. An outreach ministry which held quarterly giveaways was established. Friendship started having service every Sunday. The first all ministry week was held. First Lady Day was named Minister of Music. Deacon Charlie Fanning became chairman of the Deacon's Ministry. Deacon Harold Murphy became treasurer. Sister Jean Porch was appointed clerk. Deacon Melvin Johnson was named Sunday School Superintendent. New carpet was installed in the sanctuary. The sound booth was constructed. New light fixtures and entrance doors were installed. A lounge was established for First Lady Day, Alexis, and Lanaya. The first combined men's and women's day was held. A newsletter and monthly calendar were started. Our first Christmas gala was held. 22 members were added, nine by water baptism. What a busy 15 months we had. And then we were celebrating the second anniversary, and the third, <laughs> and First Lady Day was challenged with breast cancer, which gave her a testimony and gave us an opportunity to honor her. Where's Dylan? Between the 1st of 2009 and the end of 2010, we experienced the following. The Friendship Multipurpose Family Life Center was finally completed and dedicated. Two new ministries were established, Sisters in Spirit and Men in Action. Children Church began. The Children and Youth Usher Ministry was reestablished. We held our second Christmas gala in our own Family Life Center. We partnered with the American Red Cross and held our first annual blood drive. We participated in Relay for Life. The crawl loft was remodeled, eliminating the two sets of steps and doors. The first summer camp for youth was held. We hosted the summer lunch programs for those 18 and under. 20 members were added, 13 by water baptism. And then came the fourth anniversary celebration. The family group, theirs and ours, and theirs too. And we celebrated our fifth anniversary. During 2011 and 2012, we experienced the following. Dylan was born. Worship services were recorded on DVD as well as on CD. Five minutes of friendship clips were posted on YouTube and Facebook. Services began to broadcast on the CW TV station. A praise team was established to run the song service. The church roof, steeples, and awnings were restored due to tornado damage. We received our own donation page at the Ronald McDonald House. We donated pill bottles to the American Foundation for Children with AIDS, and they were shipped to Africa. In January 2012, we began to use a prayer line every Wednesday for midweek corporate, corporate prayer. The first Friendship Victoria Directory was published. Friendship Memorial Garden was surveyed and plotted. Pastor Day was appointed president of the 4th District of the General Missionary Baptist Convention of Georgia, better known as GMBC. We were blessed to have the Rehoboth Baptist Church family use the Life Center when their church was damaged by fire. 34 members united with us, 11 by water baptism. We celebrated the sixth anniversary. We had a pre-anniversary 2014 gone, gone fishing. Does anybody remember that? Amen. Then we celebrated the seventh anniversary. And as always, it was a family affair. During 2013 and 2014, we continued to be blessed. Sister April Murphy was named Director of Christian Education, the Mission and Outreach Ministries combined. The Men in Action and Sisters and Spirits combined and became the Oasis Ministry. 
A morning Bible study class was offered to senior citizens, and additional worship service was added to the last Wednesday of each month. Renovations and improvements were made on the pulpit and choir loft. We held services in the Life Center. We resumed services in the sanctuary on July 27, 2013, and celebrated with an all-white Sunday. Pastor Dave was appointed Vice President of the Northern Region of the GMBC. The Oasis managed to return to Men in Action and Sister in Spirit. We began to have watch night service at Friendship at an earlier time instead of combining with other churches and traveling. Thirteen members were added, seven by water baptism. How many of you remember the march from the Life Center on all, the first all white Sunday? We see the remodeled choir loft and pulpit. And that was the celebration of our first all white Sunday. Then we had a pre anniversary breakfast in 2015, leading up to the eighth anniversary. In February 2016, as in previous years, the youth ministry presented an outstanding black history program and we dressed for it. We celebrated the ninth anniversary. Blessings continued during 2015 and 2016. An extra four year was added and double doors that led to this life center were cut on the west side of the church. Brick posts leading to Friendship Memorial Garden were erected. We celebrated our summer sensation on the grounds of Friendship and in the Life Center. Sisters Marcia Harris, Gail Ingram, Deborah Smith, and Tina Murphy received training and became deaconesses. And that's Tina Murphy Treadwell. We participated in numerous outreach projects to include donating items to the safe house, collecting and donating items to the homeless, donating bottled water to Flint, Michigan, donating paper towel, paper tubes to Camp Joy for art project, donating fans to the Valley Rescue Mission, cooking breakfast and ministering to residents at Damascus Way, and donating school supplies to foster children. The ramp was widened and the dark paneling in the back foyer was replaced with sheetrock and painted. Two of the old outside wooden doors were replaced with glass doors Two members united with us. And we celebrated the 10th anniversary. And the 11th. During 27. And we celebrated the 12th with the denim and diamonds breakfast. During 2017, 2018, and 2019, we continued to reap lessons. Our service times changed, Sunday school at 845 and worship service at 10. We continued to minister beyond the four walls by collecting and distributing items for the homeless, donating items to Damascus Way, donating items to the Valley Rescue Mission, purchasing breakfast on two occasions for 50 homeless people, preparing lunch on two occasions for the homeless, the Job House, and residents of the Ralston Tower. The youth ministry turned our life center into a candy land for our annual Christmas Gala 2017. The Harris County High School girls basketball team worshiped with us. We fed them and gave them a monetary donation for their travels. We combined with Mountain Hill Baptist Church and had a very successful vacation Bible school. We hosted the 135th Mount Carey Congress of Christian Education. Pastor Day was chosen to deliver one of the sermons at the National Baptist Convention in Minneapolis, Minnesota. The Men in Action and Sisters in Spirits refocused and combined into Oasis. In February 2019, First Lady Day hosted her inaugural Women's Conference beauty of our stride, which was a great success. In March of 2019, we celebrated our 150th church anniversary in grand style. Friendship, Mount Hill, and Mount Olive combined for a successful vacation Bible school. 
Brothers Chris Bates and Charlie Walker were ordained as deacons. Three 75-inch monitors were installed in the sanctuary. Four members united by water baptism. And we celebrated the 13th anniversary. And we know what happened in 2020, don't we? And we celebrated the 14th anniversary. The blessings and challenges in 2020, 2021, and 2022. Our famous stained glass windows were restored in 2020. In March of 2020, COVID-19 disrupted our worship service because we could no longer meet in person after the 22nd. We began to use Zoom, YouTube, and Facebook. We held our first virtual homecoming, friends and family day, and revival. Sunday school, also known as church school, began to meet via Zoom on Monday evenings. Bible study began to meet on Zoom and Facebook Live. Our 152nd church anniversary in 2021 was celebrated virtually. Church business meetings were held via Zoom or by using a call-in line. Our pastor was appointed director of finance for the GMBC. On May 2nd, 2021, we were able to meet for worship service in person, but church school and Bible school remained virtual. The Life Center reopened for use in June of 2022. The return, homecoming and revival 2022 was celebrated in person. The inaugural Servants Heart Award was presented to Sister Rita Hudson on the end of Women's Day 2022. 10 members united, two by water baptism. Is anybody getting tired yet? If you are, it's too bad. <laughs> These young ladies, remember that first, who came to us as toddlers, attended their respective proms as seniors in 2021 and 2022. They both graduated with honors from Columbus High School, Alexis in 2021 and Anaya in 2022. Now, they are both college students doing their own thing. We see what Southmore Alexis likes. And freshman Lanaya started off doing her thing. And when the votes were in, she ran for freshman class president, and who won? Secretary, I'm sorry. See where that red arrow is going? She won. And Dylan? He does it all. First Lady's Day, who came to us 15 years ago, kind of shy and reserved, has, bloomed, has blossomed into a confident, dynamic, and much sought after speaker who delivers her God inspired messages with clarity and compassion. Not only has First Lady Day shown herself to be an inspirational speaker, but her writing and producing skills have developed. She has written several plays and skits for the youth ministry here at Friendship. She has reached out and participated with other churches in the production of a Christmas worship experience, Kneeling at the Manger, for the past four years. Even in 2020, we were in the midst of COVID. The production went forward via Facebook Live and YouTube. Sister Anithia Day is not just the First Lady and a member of the Friendship Baptist Church in Hamilton, Georgia, but she serves in various other capacities. She's a minister of the music ministry. She sings with the praise team and the mass choir. She works with the youth ministry. She works with the Oasis ministry. She teaches Sunday school. She works with Pastor David to get speakers for our men's and women's day program. She coordinates and secures speakers for our breast cancer awareness programs. She supports not only Pastor Day, but she supports all ministries of the church. Along with this busy schedule, she's a wife, a mother, 
She's a full-time, she has a full-time job. She attends to the needs of her parents and father-in-law. She still has a smile that lights up a room. She always has a prayer or words of encouragement when needed. One does not have to be in her presence long before realizing she's truly a woman of God. And Pastor Day has preached from friendship in Hamilton to churches all over Georgia. Some churches in many parts of Alabama, Tabernacle Baptist Church in Gastonia, North Carolina, and even at the National Baptist Convention in Minnesota. Because of the preaching and teaching of the Word, the 1,000 plus sermons that he's preached from his first series of Bible study lessons beginning in July of 2007, where he told us about the new birth, spiritual birth in Jesus Christ, to just this past week, where we are discussing giant lessons from David. From the first time he taught Vacation Bible School in June of 2008, when he told us Jesus requires discipleship, not membership, to this past June where he has grown enough to bring in others to expound on the word. His greatest accomplishment has been the baptizing of 46 members, to include Dylan. During the past 15 years, we have had some good times, we have had some challenges, we have had some additions, we have had some losses. But through it all, God gets the glory. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. And that's Romans 8, 28. And that brings us to the, today where Sister Day not only is a dynamic speaker and producer, she's also a good poster maker. <laughs> she did this. And that brings us to the beginning of the next 15 plus years. Hallelujah, can you lift up your hands? 
Father, as again, that you have given us an opportunity to come and stand before your people. We don't take it lightly, God, because we understand that it is a privilege to be able to stand and proclaim the unadulterated word of God. So God, we pray right now as we are celebrating this 15th year anniversary. We pray, God, that you would allow me to just simply be a vessel. If you, you have a sign to pour out to your people, that God, I might be able to decrease so that you can increase. Yeah. We thank you, God, for the day family. Yes, God. We thank you, God, for the friendship family. Yes, God. We thank you, God, for that union that you have put together that no man can put aside. Now, God, we're praying now as we prepare to hear your word, that those that are listening, God, will be receptive to what the word is going to say. All right. And above all, God, we're praying that the words of our mouths, the meditation of our hearts, shall be acceptable in your sight. You are our strength, and you are our redeemer. And they all said, Amen. 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 To God be the glory for the things he has done. Let me try it again. I said to God be the glory for the things he has done. Let me try it one more time. Do me a favor and pinch yourself. And if you can feel yourself when you pinch yourself, you ought to be able to say to God be the glory. I know that he won't do it. And he started you on your day's journey. Grandmama used to say he didn't have to do it, but he did. Amen. Amen. We, we greet you in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. We do believe and we bear witness that it is he that has made us and not we ourselves. And we greet you also all the way from the General Missionary Baptist Convention of Georgia, where Reverend Dr. Corbett is our president, as well as we greet you from the 4th District of the General Missionary Baptist Convention of Georgia, where I have the privilege now to serve as the president I also bring greetings from the Mount Pilgrim Baptist Church of Columbus, Georgia, the church that cares and shares. Amen. And just like friendship, we believe if you're looking for Jesus, you can find him at Mount Pilgrim. Amen. 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 We want to pause to say thanks to uh, the apple of my eye. Uh, the love of my life, the one that stands beside me, my right brain and my left brain. Amen. First Lady Tammy Stallion, who is with us today. Amen. Amen. Along with her is the head of our security. Amen. She's here. Amen. We thank God for her being here to be with her pastor. Amen. Now we want to just take a moment to recognize my friend and my brother and our sister and their family on this 15th year celebration. Can we just bless God for the day family? Come on, come on, let's bless God for the day family. Come on, come on. The first family of the house. Amen, amen. We know Pastor Dave, First Lady Dave, and family, we know that it's been a journey, but we thank God that Jesus has been by your side. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Listen, I don't want to prolong the time. Uh, there may be some college waiting on me. I don't know, but uh, we, we want to go ahead and, and get into the word. Amen. 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 Let me also recognize the officers of this great house. Amen. All the officers of the members and friends. And, and let me just say this, did not our hearts burn as the music ministry ministered to us today? Come on, let's bless God for the music ministry. Amen. Amen, amen. And I don't know 
uh, what young brother Dylan did when he was sent to the back, amen, to deal with the technology, but whatever he did, everything just came up, amen. To y'all give God glory for the young people in the house, amen. Amen. Thank God for the maestro who is with us here as well. And I do, I would be remiss if I did not recognize two pioneers that are with us today. Amen. We have the Reverend Arch Maddox that's with us today. Amen. The home the First Lady. Amen. We thank God. Come on, let's bless God for them. Amen. 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 Well, there is a word from the Lord, and it's coming out of Jeremiah chapter 20. Jeremiah chapter number 20. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 20, we will begin reading at verse number 7. Jeremiah 20, verse number 7 is where we will begin reading. And you'll pray with me and you'll say amen. We won't be here long. But if you don't say nothing, we might be here for about two hours. <laughs> Let me, let me go ahead and test it out. Can you say amen? Amen. amen? amen. Jeremiah chapter 20. Pastor Dave, I promise you I had something else in mind to preach. And I thought I was going to preach on today and somewhere around 5 o'clock this morning. All right. God said that wasn't it. All right. And he led me to this passage here in Jeremiah chapter 20 beginning at verse number 7 where the word of God says the, the word of the Lord says O Lord thou hast deceived me and I was deceived thou art stronger than I and hast prevailed I am in derision daily and everyone mocketh me since I spake I cried out I cried violence and spoil because the word of the Lord was made a reproach unto me and a derision daily. Then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. But his word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. And I was weary with forbearing, and I could not stay. Verse 7 again says, O Lord, thou hast deceived me, and I was deceived. The latter part of verse 9 says, But his word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones, and I was weary with forbearing, and I could not stay. For the time that has been afforded to me, I want to talk to you from this thought, trick or treat. Amen. Trick or treat. Look at your neighbors and neighbor. Is this a trick or is it a treat? Amen. Brothers and sisters, Jeremiah was a prophet that had his calling confirmed at an early age. His writing in chapter 1 discloses a dialogue which took place between him and God. In this dialogue, Jeremiah says, The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, Amen. I knew thee. Before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Right. Jeremiah proceeded to say unto God, I cannot speak, for I am a child. A child. Uh -huh. God responded, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Right. He said, Be not afraid yeah. of their faces, for right. I am with thee to deliver thee. And then God touched his mouth and said, I have put my words in thy mouth. Yeah. He said, your job, Jeremiah, to the nations and the kingdom is to root out, to pull down, mm -hmm. destroy, throw down, right. build, and then plant. <laughs> that was Jeremiah's confirmation and assurance of the call into ministry. Uh -huh. 
He had a direct conversation with God. With yeah. God. Yeah. He was told directly by God what to do. All right. and that he was sanctified and ordained to be a prophet of the nations before he was born. All right. All right. All right. He was also told not to worry about what to say unto the nations, for God had given him the words that he would speak. But then finally, he was assured there was no reason to fear his audience, for God said, I am with you to deliver you. So what a joy it must have been, that's today, for this young prophet to receive the charge, the, the confirmation and the assurance directly from God. To know that he was chosen sanctified and ordained before birth to speak in his name and on his behalf. To know the promise of his deliverance from evil and therefore needed not to be afraid. And I wonder this morning, is there anybody in here that's surviving on the assurance of God? Uh, it, it is not that life has been easy, nor have things always been good. However, the reason you are still holding on is because the Lord assured you in his word that he would be with you and he would never leave you nor forsake you. And I wonder if there's somebody's testimony on this pastoral appreciation that can say, I've been up and I've been down. I've had some heartaches, I've had some pain, but through it all, I'm still a holy God. Can I get somebody who can be a witness in this place and don't look at me like I'm crazy, but you can be a witness that you've had some good days, you've had some bad days, but you won't complain because the good days have outweighed the bad days, and somebody ought to give God glory that the reason why you're here is because the Lord brought you from a long Way. Can I get somebody in here who can say, Pastor Sagan, that's me. I'm thankful to the Lord because he brought me from a mighty long way. Somebody who can say, I've been criticized. I've been ostracized, but listen, I refuse to let these things deter me from my mission because God has been too good to me to turn around now. You've even had your character and reputation attacked by the enemy. But you prevailed because the weapons formed against you didn't prosper. Not because of who you are, but because of who God is. Let, let me try it again. I said somebody in here, Pastor Man, I, can be a witness to the fact that you survived, not because of who you are, but because of who God is. Can, can I get a witness in this place? Listen, 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 you've got to understand that if you can testify to any of these things uh, and you can be a witness that God kept you in your right mind, you ought to be able to praise him right now. I, I wonder, can I take about 30 seconds for somebody who can give him praise right now? Because the fact of the matter is, uh, out of all that you went through, you should have lost your mind. You should be crazy. You ought to be putting your shoes on your head and your hand on your feet. But somebody ought to give the glory that he kept you in your right mind. Somebody ought to praise him that out of all that you lost, you didn't lose your faith. You didn't lose. Uh, <laughs> tell your neighbor, I didn't lose my mind. Lord, I thank you that out of all the things I lost, first lady today, I never lost my faith. I didn't lose my joy. And I certainly didn't lose my praise. And somebody ought to be able to praise God without a cheerleader. 
I'm getting to the text, but I need to talk to somebody because I've been watching and I've been seeing how the music ministry have been trying to get us to worship and get us to praise the Lord. But I'm noticing that some people want to sit there with your arms folded and you're acting like God has never done anything for you. But in case you didn't know, you were created to praise Him. You were created to worship Him. And when we all get to heaven, that's all we're going to do is be around the throne and worship his name. So instead of waiting until you get to heaven, you ought to go ahead and worship him now. Is there anybody in here who understands this is the dressing up room down here? You've got to go to heaven from right down here. Yes, we have the promises of God confirmed in our lives. However, the reality of the fact is that trouble can bring about a disposition of doubt and regret. That's right. That's right. Jeremiah had his calling confirmed and received assurance of God's deliverance. However, in the text, the tone of his conversation with God suggests a disposition, first lady, of doubt and regret. It is as if he questioned the legitimacy of the call and whether he heard God wrong or not. I can imagine in his mind he was thinking, Lord, you told me that this calling was blessed by you before I was born. But I must have heard you wrong because, listen, there's some things going on that I have some questions and I'm trying to figure out why they're going on. You told me my assignment was to root out and yeah. to pull down, to destroy, to throw down, to build, and to plant. But I must have heard you wrong. Yeah. You told me not to worry about what to speak for you place your words in my mouth. Uh -huh. But I must yeah. have heard you wrong. You told me not to be afraid of those of which I am to speak for. You would be with me to deliver me, but I must have heard that you wrong. Right. Perhaps, Pastor Day, after the number of years you've served, you may be over the hump now. Yeah. But from a pastor to pastor perspective, I'm sure there were times over the years uh, you questioned if you heard God wrong. Yeah. 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 You, you know what he told you. However, after dealing with people, I'm going somewhere, that hear the word but do nothing to let the word penetrate and change their ways. After dealing with people that don't care to follow leadership through even though they have been taught the, the order and the hierarchy of God's church. After dealing with people that are not open to any change in an effort to enhance the church. After dealing with people that hear what they want to hear in their ears as opposed to what has come out of your lips and they become offended and they leave the church after dealing with people that the Lord wants to leave but they want to leave the Lord. I'm sure you have questioned in your mind, Lord, did I hear you wrong? Well, that's his testimony, but do I have anybody else in the building who can say, I've been down some roads, I've been in some things, I've had some attacks that come against me, and I wonder if I heard the Lord wrong. Is there anybody who can say, Pastor today is not the only one, but there were times in my life I thought I heard him wrong. I, I, I thought he wanted me to usher, but after ushering, I may have heard him wrong. I thought uh, he wanted me to be a deacon, but after being a deacon, I may have heard him wrong. I thought uh, he wanted me to sing in the choir, but after singing in the choir, I may have heard him wrong. Is there anybody get here who can say, Pastor Stallion, there have been times in my life uh, I thought I heard him wrong. First lady today, I know you understand. Because first ladies, or I should say thousands of pastors, okay. are right by the side mm -hmm. of the pastor. Yeah. Yeah. And she knows the nights. She knows the days. She knows the heartaches. She knows the disappointments. She knows the pains. And that's why we ought to thank God when you have a good first lady. I said that's why you ought to thank God 
do you have a good first lady? Because if the pastor don't have a happy home, it's going to be hard for him to give you a happy church. Y'all didn't get what I just said. Somebody in here needs to understand that we thank God for our wives. Here's what he said. He said, Lord, you fooled me. <laughs> he said, Lord, here's what you did. You, you were bigger than me. You were more powerful than me. And so, Lord, I, I, I want to know what it is you've gotten me into. <laughs> Uh, when, when, when we think about if it's a trick or a treat, uh, the, the first thing I need you to know about the text is I see, Pastor Dave, the trick of the enemy. Uh, the trick of the enemy comes in verses 7 and 8 where he says, oh Lord, oh Lord. you've deceived me. And I was deceived because you are stronger than I and you have prevailed and now I am in the risen day. Look at a neighbor and said, neighbor, he, he was ridiculed and mocked. Yeah. And, and, and he says, everybody mocks me. Since I cried out, I cried violence and spoil, which means, listen, I cried out judgment against the wicked. He says, since that time, daily I am being ridiculed and I'm being mocked. And I found out something, Pastor Dave, over my years of being a pastor, that people would jump and shout uh, when you're talking about having money and having cars and, and having material things. But when you start talking about the wages of sin is death and the gift of God is eternal life, they stop coming to church. Is there anybody who understands uh, that the job of the pastor is that we can always make you feel good? Uh, but sometimes we got to tell you that the wages of sin is death and the gift of God is eternal life. And I don't know about you, but I thank God for having a pastor who told me like it was, because that's why I saw in myself that I needed to make a change. Is there anybody else in here who can thank God for a pastor? that will stand flat-footed and tell you just like it is. Uh, whether you want to hear it or not, uh, I thank God for a pastor that will tell me just like it is. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, he says, listen, he, listen, the trick of the enemy is simply this. He says, you have deceived me. Everybody is mocking me. He said, ever since I cried out, listen, because the word of the Lord has made a reproach unto me. And, and, and you got to understand when he talks about being a reproach, he's talking about one that's being discredited and disapproved. He, he says, I am a derision, not Sunday after Sunday, but I am a derision daily. And, 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 and here we can see the trick of the devil is to bring doubt about the assignment. I'm going somewhere. Because you've got to understand that there's some people who ought to be singing, but they're not singing. There's some people who should be serving, but they're not serving. There's some people who should be giving, but they're not giving. I'm going to work because we have allowed the enemy to come in and to cause us to question and doubt God. But I wonder if I got somebody in here who is a pastor stallion. I've come too far now to turn around. I believe that Jesus assigned me to do what I do, and I'm not going to let anybody turn me around. I need about ten of you in here who can say, I'm not going to turn around. I don't care what they say. I don't care how they talk. I don't care how they try to push me down. As a matter of fact, you can go ahead and push me down because when I go down, I'm down on my knees. But when I come up, I'm like Superman. Is there anybody who can give God the praise that he keeps you going all even when you want to give up? Look at the name and say, this joy I have. The world didn't give it. And the world can't take it away. I need you to understand the trick of the enemy is to get us, Pastor Dave, to start questioning and doubting God. Amen. Wow. Amen. <laughs> but you can do this because Jesus said, Pastor Maddox, he says, in this world, you shall have tribulation. But you can be of good cheer. 
For I have overcome the world. I, I have ups and downs, but I'm an overcomer. I have heartaches and pains, but I'm an overcomer. I have sunshine and rain, but I'm an overcomer. Folks talk about me sometimes, but I'm an overcomer. They, they have set traps for me, but I am a Overcomer. Is there anybody who can give God the praise that despite what you go through, you're still an overcomer? I, I, I'm not talking about somebody that's never been through anything, but I think I got about 15 who can say, Pastor Stagg, and I've been through some uh, that was greater than a heartache. It was greater than a stomachache. It was greater than a headache. But I've been through some things that I did not think I could get out of. But can somebody give him glory that he brought you through the thing? That you thought was going to take you out. Say the trick of the enemy. But, but not only do I see the trick of the enemy, Pastor Day, I see the impact of the trick. Here's it, the impact of the trick. It, here it is. It, 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 in 9 8, it says, Then I see. <laughs> I will not make mention of him nor speak anymore in his name. The impact of the trick is to get us to shut up. I, I don't hear anybody. The impact of the trick is to get you to keep sitting there with your arm full and your mouth closed. Yeah, let me try it one more time. The impact of the trick is to cause you to be silent. Because the truth of the matter is, the devil knows that whenever you start opening your mouth and giving God glory, when praises go up, blessings gonna come down. But some of us can't get our blessing because we've been fooled by the trick. But can I get somebody in here who can say, I'm not fooled by the trick. I'm going to give him glory now. I'm going to shout hallelujah now because I'm going to praise my way out of this situation. Is there anybody out there who understands that you can praise your way? How dare you stop singing in the choir? How dare you stop praying with the deacon? How, how dare you stop serving in the church? How dare you? Don't let the enemy trick you. It's nothing but a trick. You've got to understand that the word of God says, now, listen, if you serve him, yeah. Yeah. he promises to be faithful unto you. i, I got to get out of here. Listen, listen, listen. I, I, I see the trick of the enemy. I see the impact of the trick. But finally, I see the motivation of the tree. The motivation of the tree, first lady said, is this. He said, but his word was a treat because it was in my heart. I'm going to wear as a burning fire. Shut up in my bones. I was weary with forbearing and I could not stay. Now I got to help you because you need to understand the treat part of this is simply this is that whenever you have the word in you the word is more than a notion but the word is also a feeling. Y'all didn't get what I just said. I said the word, the word is more than a notion, but the word is a feeling. Yeah. And that's why the senior members of the church used to say, I got a feeling. Yeah. That everything yeah. is going to be all right. And there's anybody in here who knows what I'm talking about. I'm looking for, I got a feeling crowd in here that everything is going to be all right. Because when I want to give up, I've got a feeling on the inside. And even though I can't see, Every now and then I can feel that in my soul. Somebody ought to give him glory right there. That is not just a notion, but it's a feeling. Drink or 
street. The devil wants to trick us. But God wants to treat us. And in case you didn't know that you've been treated, let me tell you what he did to treat you. He treated you because the Bible says he was wounded for my transgression. He was bruised for my iniquity. The chastisement of my peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed. In other words, uh, he treated uh, my sin. How did he do it? Uh, he did it uh, on an old rugged cross. And uh, let me tell you about the cross. Uh, and then uh, we'll bid you farewell. It was on uh, one Friday. Yes, sir. Uh, when uh, the morning a uh, savior up a hill uh, called Calvary. Uh, and uh, if you're wondering uh, why uh, he was being marched up a hill, uh, it's because uh, he was preparing uh, your treatment. Uh, what are you talking about, Pastor? Well, uh, when he went up there, uh, he gave his hands to the nails uh, and his feet uh, to the spikes. And uh, when he got him uh, attached to the cross past today, uh, the Bible says uh, that they lifted him up. Uh, and I heard him say, uh, if I uh, be lifted up from the earth, uh, I'll draw uh, all men under me. Uh, and when they lifted him up, uh, they began to draw me. Can I give a witness here? He treated because I, good God Almighty, was sinking deep in sin, far from a peaceful shore, very deeply stained with the sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despair and cry. Can I get somebody who can say, Lord, look at me when no other could help. He died to wash away my sin. He died to pay the price for my sin. He shed his blood, and there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's name. Sinners plunge beneath the flood. Lose all their guilt and shame. Church, who know he died on Good Friday, but that's not how the story ends. Three days later, he rose again. I just got one question for you. Ain't he all right? I said, ain't he all right? I said, ain't he all right? I said, ain't he all right? Corey Neal would say, ain't he, ain't he? All right. If you know he's all right, say,
He's all right. He's all right. I said he's all right. Is it a trick? Or is it a treat? He did trick you, Pastor Day. He treated you. He put something in you that nobody can put out. It's a fire that continues to burn. And no matter what we go through, no matter the trial or the tribulation, there's something on the inside that keeps us going when we want to give up. I don't know who this is for. I, I, this, this is a pastoral appreciation. We're praising God for the first family. But I heard Pastor Dave say, Lord, let it not be about the call, but let it be about Jesus. And I don't know who this is for, but I believe the reason why God arrested me at five this morning is because somebody in here has felt like giving up. You want it, and you may perhaps want to throw it in. You're feeling like perhaps God has spoken to you. He has shrieked to you. He has He's told you that everything's going to be all right, but everything don't seem to be all right. That the things you're going through right now, nobody knows but you. But I want you to know, he knows. Did you hear what I just said? He knows. And so before you throw in the towel, just look from within. Because he put something there yeah. that trouble can't put out. Amen. Oh man, I should have had some witnesses right there. Amen. He put something there Amen. that trial can't put out. Amen. Tribulation can't put it out. Amen. Pain can't put it out. Amen. Sickness can't put it out. Amen. And so to somebody here today, Amen. Pastor Dave, I have your permission. And we don't want to forget about those over the live stream because it's so important that we appeal to you as well. But somebody here today, maybe you haven't made a decision to accept Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. You can't witness to what I've just preached, what Pastor Dave has preaching for over 15 years here in this church. Unless you connect with the one in which we are preaching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus wants to save you. But watch this. You've got to want to be saved. A psychiatrist can't help somebody that don't want to be helped. Y'all don't hear me. That the first way of being helped is to admit that you need help. Somebody here today may say, well, I need help. I need Jesus in my life because at the point of my life that I feel like throwing in the tower, I want to feel that on the inside that keeps me going on. This is an appeal to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Amen. As we extend the invitation to Christian discipleship, someone that needs to come. Whatever the protocol of the house is, Pastor Day, I don't know if they come up or whatever they do. But listen, here's what I'm going to ask you to do. I'll take the privilege to say, if that's you and you want to come to Jesus, if you just raise your hand. If you just raise your hand. If you want to come to Jesus. Over the live stream, I'm going to appeal to you. Maybe somebody out there that's viewing us today and you want to 
make Jesus your Lord and your Savior. You, you want to make him your choice. You want him to be that fire, his word that will keep you going on even when you want to give up. Here's what I want you to do. I want you, if you're on Facebook, go ahead and post it. Post on Facebook, I give myself away. Please do that. Post on Facebook. Pastor Dave will be in touch with you. This church will reach out to you. Leave us something that we can contact you. If that's you, we don't want to take for granted that everybody's saved because the truth of the matter is that everybody's not saved. Can I get a witness? Would that be one? Would that be one? Would that be one? God be the glory for the things he has done. If God has blessed you, can you give him a praise? Amen. church and his family will celebrate the 15th anniversary of the service of the Reverend LaCoya D. Day to the church and to the community and whereas this celebration will take place on October the 7th, 2022 at Friendship Baptist Church in Hamilton, Georgia and whereas the purpose of this celebration is to share this special anniversary day with a servant of God who bears good fruit throughout Hamilton and wherever he goes. Now, therefore, our ransom floor, our ransom party, mayor of the city of Hamilton, Georgia, do hereby proclaim October the 7th, 2022, as Reverend LaCoya Deep Day Appreciation Day in Hamilton, Georgia. In witness whereof I have hereunto set my hand and caused the official seal of Hamilton, Georgia to be affixed this second day of October 27th, 2022. Ransom for the Mayor of City of Hamilton, Georgia. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Stallion, for that beautiful word. Is it a trick or is it a treat? Amen. <laughs> Is it a trick or is it a treat, Pastor Day, Sister Day? Amen. We've seen in 15 years so many trials and tribulations that God has brought you through and over. And the truth was that we got to see you praise the Lord despite it all. Amen. And we know that that is only the joy and the praise that our God can give. Amen. Sister Day, we saw you praise him day in and day out. You might have lost your hair, but you didn't lose your praise. Amen. <laughs> Pastor Day, we saw you praise him. You lost your mother, but you never lost your joy. Amen. And we thank you for that. And that strength that only comes from the Lord above. Amen. The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But the Lord gives us trials and tribulation, not just for you, but for us too. We, he gave us you guys, and he allowed us to look at you coming through it. And it has been a test of testament for all of us. Amen. Amen. 
Pastor Day, I stand here to say we love you. We praise you. We thank God for the spirit that's within you. We thank you for being our pastor. We thank you for being our teacher. We thank you for being our shepherd. Amen. Amen. We thank you for the right hand that sits beside you. Sister Day, we thank you so much for your humble spirit. We thank you for being a comforter to Pastor Day in his time of need. And we can't forget about our children. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. We thank you, Amaya, Dylan, and Alexis. And my grandma used to say, the mess just in you because who your mama and your daddy is. Amen. We thank God for the mess. Amen. Amen. We thank the Lord that you're big enough for the for the for the for the blessing that He's giving you, but you're small enough to serve Him. Amen. So many people on a day like this where we come and we want to honor you, they wouldn't dare stand up and be a part of the worship. But look what we have. We come to honor the day family. And the day been a part of our worship from the top to the bottom. Amen. We praise the Lord for that humble to see you guys. I can say so much, but I'm not. Amen. I'm going to stay on task. I love you, and I know I, I echo the, wor the words of everybody at the Friendship Baptist Church. We love you guys, and we are honored to have you for 15 great, amazing, magnificent years. And I hope that we can have you for 15 more. Amen. So, on the behalf of the culinary arts, I'm not a part of that ministry. Amen. Maybe one day. We want to present to you Sister Day, Pastor Day and Dylan, they made you a cup. Dylan, Pastor Day, Sister Day and Dylan. Lexi and Amaya, wait, yours is coming. Amen. And we have expressions of love from near and far that have sent the gift of an expression of love and we want to present this to you today too. Amen. Amen. Good 
afternoon, Saints. Congratulations, Pastor Day and First Lady Day. Um, the Mount Pilgrim Baptist Church family wanted to send their love and their congratulations. And so we want to just say thank you so much again for the invite. Um, and this is from Pastor Stallion and I. We love you, and we're so very grateful that you are our friends. say congratulations to them. We thank you all for being our friends and we don't talk all the time and get to fellowship all the time but we know that anytime we call, you all will be there for us and you know we will be there for you. And so we just thank God for friendship. Amen. 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 God bless you. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise, everybody. Give God a hand clap of praise. Give God a hand clap of praise. To God be the glory for the great things he has done, is doing, and I believe by faith all the things that he shall do. Let me first of all say again, thank you to Pastor Stallion. Will you all give God praise to Pastor Stallion today? Thank God. I'm grateful God woke you up this morning. And I'm grateful God imparted into your spirit, not a maybe word, but a right now word. Because truth to fact is sometimes I do ask the Lord, why have you deceived me? But I'm so very grateful that even in my asking, God has a way of showing me that there is something on the inside of me that just won't let me hold my peace. And so, Pastor, thank you so very much. Sister Daddy, thank you again for accompanying him. Again, I know it's first Sunday. And as tradition would have it, the Lord's table would be observed. And so I thank you for coming and sharing with us in this moment of celebration. Let me pause now and allow the First Lady of the Friendship Church to come and she... Uh, if she cares to have remarks, and then I'll come behind her. Will you all uh, give her a hand a celebration? Now, if y'all won't give her a hand, come on, give her a, a real hand of celebration. To God be the glory for the great things he has done. Amen. Let us see. Come on. Yeah, you might have to go. Come on, see. Amen. Amen. Before I give my remarks, um, as it was shown all throughout the slideshow, all throughout everything that has been said, friendship, you have loved and accepted our entire family. And um, I think my kids can probably say sometimes they felt like they were here more than home. So this is a really integral part of their upbringing, and your love has helped to mold and develop them to where they are now. We still need your prayers, amen? <laughs> As we are navigating parenting young adults, it is a different place, amen? But I'm grateful for it. So they're gonna come up at this time. I don't know why they're hesitating, but they're gonna come up at this time. Can y'all give them a hand? Yeah. 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 To give some expressions. father, and is the divine role and calling, becoming a father, stepfather, 
grandfather or a foster father is an opportunity to become like God, to love and care for his children as God loves and cares for us. And we thank you for taking that role seriously. We know we don't always get it right. We make you mad, even some disappointment. But you are always there, fussing, but there. <laughs> Teaching gives us the le gives us the lesson, but always giving support. So today we want to say we love you, we see you, and appreciate you. You are in the Potter's hands, and every time you are broken, he is skilled to put you back together again. Amen. Um, just to echo back to what both my mom and my and my brother said. Um, Dad, we love you. We may not always um, act like we're appreciative, but I am. The only person I can ever think to call is my dad, and I love you. All right. And we've been asked the same thing. <laughs> In case you have fallen back.
This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Go down to the potter's house, and there I will give my message. So I went down to the potter's house, and I saw him working at the wheel. But the pot he was slapping, shaping from day to day, shaping from the clay day to day, was mar was smeared, marred in his hands. So the potter formed into another pot, yeah. formed it into another pot, shaping it as seemed best to him.
encourage you to stand flat-footed in the waiting room, but wait while you wait. We can't just sit there waiting. We gotta serve while we're waiting. We have to serve without any reservation because we know who we're doing it for in the waiting room. And this is why we wait, because one day we're not waiting for a physician to come and say that it was successful or not. We're not waiting on the physicians to say that we're going to ICU or we're going to recover, but we're waiting on our Savior to say, Servant, well done. You've been faithful over a few things. So that's how we can wait. That's why we will continue to wait. And I praise God for what he's going to do. The waiting is not in vain. Be strong and a good cheer. But we will get our reward. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Come on, give our first lady a hand to celebration. Come on, come on, come on. Why don't you stand on your feet and give her a hand to celebration this morning. Is that the goal? God be all of the glory. Listen, I, I know the day is far spent, the hour is far spent, but people don't have to be nice. And I could say a whole lot, but even now in the moment, I choose not to. I just want to say thank you. You don't have to do, but when you do, and Whatever you do, thank you. Because I recognize that it's not about who I am. It's about who God is. And I'm the first to confess that, yet yeah, the journey is more difficult now than it once was. But I still know God is still able. And so it is because I know that he's called me. Regardless of where we are or how we understand, my own allegiance and allegiance has to be to God. And so I ask that you would just continue to pray with me and pray for me that God will take us from where we are to where God would have us to be. 15 years, I've seen a lot. The road has ebbed and flowed. But through it all, God has kept us. Friendship, thank you for the things that you do and people don't see. It's those things that keep gas in the tank. Because it's easy to do on days like today. When everybody is looking. When, when I get up in the morning and I receive messages by text. Or when I'm at my job and I receive emails, messages by email. Those are the things that keep the preacher motivated. And so I don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. But I'm going to trust in the fact in he that holds my tomorrow. There are times when I would look and the church would be overflowing and filled. But even now it's a testament to the fact that time is filled with swift transition. Friendship, all you got, nothing special, nothing unique about me. I'm just a preacher, I believe, called by God. And I'm asking that you would ask God to keep and cover me that I might rightly divide the word of truth. Amen. It's 15 years later, Sister Porch, you said it up top. I'm going to ask you again today. Follow me as I follow Christ. Amen. I didn't say understand me. 
I said, follow me. Because if Christ is leading me, if you follow me, he's going to lead you as well. Amen. Do I have any help in here? Amen. And so, I close with saying that God has brought us this far and our lights have been cut off. Colony had come in foreclosed on the life center. Amen. Every person in here who needs to receive honorarium has received honorarium. Amen. If God has taken care of us, then I wish I had some real folk with a real worship that understand the God that I'm talking about. If God has taken care of the church this far, we're not going to start questioning God today. Are y'all in here with me? For God I live. For God I die. Johnny B, you were with me when I walked through the door for the first time. I need you to stand and keep praying that God will take me on to where he needs me to go. Amen. I love you. I thank God for you. This morning was hard. My wife knows it. So when y'all talk about things that she know and see, it was hard for me this morning. And I, I'd be less of a man to say it wasn't. But it's not about me. Regardless of what has happened, it's about God. And we're going to do what God has asked us to do. Whether people understand or whether people don't understand. And when he says, well done, I hear his voice say, certainly come up high. I make the rule over me. Amen. Alexis, Lemaya, and Dylan, I love y'all so much. I'm hard on you because I want you to be the best that you can be. Amen. I've seen children all walks of life, all angles of life, and it doesn't take but a second to destroy it all. And I know y'all pushing back on me and say, but daddy, you did it too. But I think I got some people in this building over 65 that will testify the grace that God gives me may not have been the grace he's going to provide for you. But if you take God at his word, whether you're in Orangeburg or whether you're in Fort Valley, God will do what needs to be done. Hold your own road. As I told you, hold your own road. Plant your own seed. Don't you worry about who's not in the field with you. Don't you worry about your disability. You said it yourself. Don't look at my disability. Look at me. We're all God is going to make it. Yeah. Y'all pray for my dad. Yeah. My dad is still struggling with the demise of my mom. But I still know God has it in his hand. How, how many of y'all ever lost a loved one before? Let me see your hands. Did God keep you? Is he still keeping you? And so I want to encourage my daddy today to know that if God has kept us, he'll keep him too. Amen. Now we call mama's name and daddy's name and my daddy's name and my brother's, but some of y'all don't know who they are. So I need all of them to stand. Y'all stand. Everybody that's kin to me, Shonda Marlowe, that means y'all got to move now. I'm talking to you, Marlowe. Y'all give them a hand of celebration. Amen. Y'all just don't know. I love the Lord. 
and he has heard my cry. And as long as I live and trouble rise, I'm going to hasten, run, hide myself in his throne. Amen. We're going, we're going, we're going, but I, I just needed to take the time because I know I'm here right now. I'm not promised to be here next next time. Next week for that matter. And so I want to say friendship, I love you. Those persons who are working diligently even now in this life center, it, it's not grains, but it's grits. Amen. Thank you for the hard work that you've done to feed us at one o'clock. Amen. De Deacon Williams know what I'm talking about. Don't, don't you want to, sometimes the game go into overtime, the fifth quarter. We, we've gone into overtime. And so I just want to say thank you. All hearts and minds are clear. I think that's it. That's my I'd say even if they not. Marlo, Appreciate you, man, for taking the time to be here and hang out with me. You see that joker right there in the back? The black suit on the gold tie, he old Alabama fan. <laughs> that joker right there sitting next to him, old Deacon Smell Gracious. Don't be scared, Deacon Bill. He old, he old Alabama fan. But I got somebody with me today. Me and my Lord run the table. You better tell him, boy. To God be the glory. Amen. Amen with him. We got, hold on, go ahead. Mama says she wants everybody to come over, but she wants you all to come first so that they can take pictures as you come in. Okay, can, can I get what Gail left? Can I get the preacher's picture real quick with Gail? Can you get the preacher's picture real quick? Amen. I, I you all know I usually don't let people talk, but I'm going to let my daddy this time. <laughs> so y'all, 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 y'all don't hate me now, because y'all know who I am. Go ahead, yeah. I just want to thank God for one more time. Amen. And one more opportunity. I want to let Courtney you need to know for his mother say. If God lets you live to see 15 years, he at this church, he will let you live to see 30. Amen. And when I get there, mm -hmm. to see my wife, I'll tell her, she wasn't here with me at the 15. But we made it.